A morgue? Seriously? As I followed Kane into the dark, long, creepy hallway, my entire body started to shake like a cold chihuahua. Literally, I was trembling so bad I had to consciously think about slowing down my breathing. My stomach churned and tightened so badly I didn't know if I was going to throw up, crap myself, or faint. I wanted to turn and run out of the building, but it was like I was magnetized to Kane as I instinctively wanted to follow him so I wouldn't be alone. This was going to be a long night. The second we got away from the dull light in the doorway, my eyes started seeing things. There were ghosts everywhere. <laughs> I started feeling spiderwebs on my back. Basically, I was just starting to freak out. It was time to pull out my big guns, my one million watt flashlight. Flicking it on, the entire hallway was suddenly illuminated. Kane stopped in his tracks and turned to me. The hell's that? Kane said, looking at my glowing hand. My flashlight. I eked out, knowing he was going to tell me to put away. That's not a flashlight. That's a spotlight. That thing's ridiculous. Click. I shut it off. You see, Kane is not only a badass, scary guy. Nothing scares him, meaning he doesn't like using flashlights when doing a ghost hunt. I could see he's sitting in a dark room, but Kane doesn't even use one to walk. This man is a freak of nature, nerves of steel, and he can somehow see in the dark. To appease Kane, I took out my glow stick and cracked it open. This illuminated about my fingers and nothing else, and I could barely use it to walk. Not only am I afraid of ghosts, I am afraid of tripping on something too, especially in a dark old building I have never been in before. How do these things not cross Kane's mind? The guy just walked in front of me like a tank plowing through the countryside with no fear of tripping at all. Instead of starting off our little tour of the paranormal in some place nice and easy like, say, the lobby, Kane made a beeline straight for the morgue. Yes, the place has a real morgue, as in a place where dead bodies were stored. In case you didn't read that right, I said morgue. No one should ever go to a morgue unless you're dead. And of course, it's, it's not a nice shiny morgue with neon lights like, like in CSI. No, 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 no. This one was pitch black and a hundred years old with a very convenient wooden sign that simply said, morgue. It's a, it freaking said morgue. Oh, who does that? You can't, you can't have a code name, make it less creepy, like resting place of the dead, dead lobby, deceased dining hall, purgatory, anything besides morgue would do. <laughs> anyway, the second we entered, what do we notice? But walk-in freezers, old 1930s walk-in freezers with wooden doors. At first, I chuckled. <laughs> we weren't in a morgue. We were in a kitchen. What, what a relief. Hey, they used to store the bodies in here. Why don't you sit in here and I'll shut you in. See if you can get anything. Kane's words echoed in my mind. Bodies in here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so we were in the morgue. And that's a freezer for bodies. Oh, boy. As Kane opened the freezer door to let me walk in the icy tundra that they used to store dead bodies in, something happened inside my head. With my normal tendencies to turn into a pile of jello at the slightest bit of fear, you'd think I would have fainted. I was in the pitch black in a morgue with Jason Voorhees, who just opened the door of a freezer for me to enter. But I didn't faint. Amazingly, the cold sweats, chills, and constant need to vomit disappeared, and I walked right into the freezer. I wasn't afraid. My underwear might have been a little bit soiled, but I wasn't scared. What the, what the hell is happening? 